Hi everyone, Russell here again. Today we'll be doing the valve um, adjustment on the Honda Talon uh, 1000. So to get things started, we'll uh, remove the rear cover. And then the next step is going to be the air box. Okay, so to remove the air box, I'm gonna just show you from here. Um, there's a little uh, retaining clip here that you have to open up to release this. You have this bolt, which is hooked uh, to the exhaust pipe. Um, and then here on the side, which would be the passenger side, is your air inlet. Okay, so right here is, I believe it was either a five or six millimeter, um, just to loosen that up. So keep in mind that this piece is glued into the box uh, to keep that water and air tight. So you just have to undo the clamp. Okay, let's get this turned over. Okay, also to take out the air box, so you, you have a 10 millimeter bolt here, 10 millimeter bolt there, and one right there on the, on the bottom. Okay, then you have your two um, air intakes that you have to uh, loosen up and pop off. And those go right onto the intake manifold. Okay, the next step to this, and also before I removed the air box, I rinsed everything off to get rid of all the dust. It doesn't look like it, but I did wash everything down. So I kind of have the intakes um, capped off. I have uh, both uh, spark plugs um, removed and inspected. They're, they're both good to go. I did uh, make a separate video on how to inspect those if you want to watch it. Uh, and and then the next step is going to remove the valve cover. So I have the three valve cover bolts removed. Um, that's what they look like. Once you get the valve cover taken off, um, that's what you're going to be working with. And then here's the, the valve cover, so I'll get it all, um, the seal all cleaned up and everything before I put it back in. All right, the next step to this is removing the rear part of the skid plate and you have to do this to get access to the to the crankshaft okay here we are on the driver's side um, have it jacked up a little bit and then the rear skid plate is removed and you can see right here is the front of the engine okay that's the crankshaft hole cap Okay, so you have to remove that to get onto the crankshaft to, to spin it around. Okay, that is, uh, a, I'm using a 24 millimeter wrench um, for that to remove it. You have that 24 millimeter um, crankshaft hole cap removed, and then you can have, there's the access you'll have. Keep in mind, this is the front of the engine, and when you rotate it, it will be counterclockwise. Here we are on the passenger side of the Honda Talon. The next step is going to be to remove the um, timing hole cap. Okay, so where that is located, so you're gonna come up here and right, right there. And that's going to be a six millimeter Allen to get that off. So here's the um, timing hole cap. Um, which there is an O-ring, but it's still down below. Here's the 24 millimeter crankshaft uh, hole cap, which has the O-ring built in there. So those are the two things you have to remove in order to line things up before you do a valve uh, measurement or adjustment. So here we are. I rotated uh, the crankshaft counterclockwise until um, I lined up the mark so you can see the mark the line is right through the middle and you can see the T probably right there um, and then the TF is just right above that T uh, so that this is where you line it up okay to ensure that everything is lined up properly you're going to come here to the camshaft sprocket You'll see a line right there. 
um, a line right there, and that punch mark in that exact position will let you know your, um, where it needs to be. So those lines should run um, parallel with the top of the cylinder head. All right, so right here, we're going to measure the, the clearance be, between the valve lifter and the cam lobe. Okay, so this should be um, 0.16 millimeters uh, plus minus um, 0 0.03. So you'll see right there, it's just slightly dragging. And uh, so that's, that is good to go. We don't need to do anything with that. So this is the front cylinder intake valve, 0.16 millimeter clearance. Okay. If if that front intake um, clearance is not right and it needs to be adjusted, um, you'll have to adjust the valve clearance by changing the valve lifter shim. So you'll need a shim kit and there's a formula um, to figure that out. Um, I'll post a picture of it, it's just easier and then you can read it. So um, if you do need to adjust it, luckily mine is good to go. All right, so we have the front intake valve clearance um, verified that it's correct. The next step is going to be rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise 270 degrees and align the mark, the TR mark, with the index mark. And then once we do that, we'll be able to inspect the rear cylinder intake valve clearance. All right, so we rotated it. Uh, we have the line there in the middle and lined up and that is the TR can't quite see the R but we're on the TR mark all right so we have it slid in so this is the rear cylinder intake um, that is 0.16 and it is just barely hanging up so it is like perfectly adjusted so Again, we are good to go. No adjustment needed here. So, okay, so here we're going to measure the clearance on the rear cylinder exhaust valve. Um, I inserted the filler gauge here between the rocker arm roller and cam lobe. So you'll see that is also perfectly adjusted. So we are good to go there. Again, um, so this is a different uh, thickness. This is 0.24 millimeters with a plus minus of 0 0.02. So the exhaust valve um, is different than the intake valve. All right, now that we've done the rear cylinder intake and exhaust. The next step is rotate the crankshaft counterclockwise 250 degrees and align the FE mark with the index. So we'll go ahead and do that and then we can make our final uh, valve adjustment. All right, so we've made our last rotation on the crankshaft. Um, so this will be the final one to adjust the front exhaust valve. You'll see right there's FE. It's all lined up. So we'll go up to the top and measure. So here we are measuring it, uh, the front exhaust valve. Uh, this is 0.24 millimeters um, plus minus 0 0.02 millimeters. Uh, I have the feeler gauge inserted between the rocker arm roller and the cam lobe. Again, front exhaust valve. So right there, it does drag just a little bit, but um, we're good to go on that adjustment as well. So no adjustments needed. Okay, I didn't need to adjust anything, but I'll just go over it um, in case you do have to. So up here at the top, you know, it says adjust the valve clearance by loosening the lock nut and turning the adjusting screw until there's a slight drag on the feeler gauge. 
So you will need a, a three millimeter tappet wrench and a um, eight by nine millimeter uh, box wrench. So once you have those adjusted to where you need to be, uh, apply um, engine oil to the lock nut threads and seating surface. Hold the adjusting screw and tighten the lock nut. Tighten down to seven foot pounds. So after you tighten it down, then you'll readjust to make sure that you um, have the right measurement there at the 0.24 millimeter plus minus 0 0.02. So hopefully you can kind of see that um, where it all goes in. So now for intake valve clearance adjustment. So here's kind of the diagrams. You'll remove the valve lifter and shim. Clean the valve shim contact area and the valve lifter with compressed air. Measure the shim and record the thickness. Okay, so down here's how you're going to um, know what shim you'll need to get the proper clearance. So you'll calculate the new shim thickness used in the equation below. Um, A equals B minus C plus D. So A is the new shim thickness, B recorded valve clearance, C specified valve clearance, D old valve sh shim clearance. So you'll, you'll need a valve shim kit for that. Um, so you can go up or down, whatever you need to properly adjust your valves. But right here, that's the directions on how to do it properly. So to put things back together, the first thing I'm going to do is um, install the crankshaft hole cap, which there's up on the front. And I don't think I mentioned it previously, but when you're rotating the crankshaft, it'll be a 17 millimeter um, socket and ratchet is what I use to slowly rotate it counterclockwise. And then that nut itself is the 24 millimeter. So the 17 will be behind that once you take that off. And then we'll reinstall the timing hole cap. Okay, so I took the, the seal off the valve cover, um, got all the dirt off of it, cleaned it up, um, wiped it down with a, kind of a motor oil soaked uh, um, rag, and, uh, and then put it back in there. So then we'll drop it onto the cylinder head next. Okay, we have the valve cover loosely on and up here in the front uh, make sure that that gasket is properly seated and that's kind of where the gasket was like a half moon shape so really ensure that that is perfectly down before you do anything else especially tighten them down so here's the proper directions for the valve cover installation so you will need to put a little bit of silicone on the half moon shape that I was telling you about and um, already remove the old stuff. And then the valve cover bolts will be installed to seven foot pounds. So here's the information, all the specs on that. So we have the valve cover bolts tightened down. It doesn't have directions in there, but I just uh, loosely snugged the middle and then went front back, middle front back a couple times until I got it torqued down to the right specs on there. All right, just put the spark plugs back in. Torque specs on those are 16 foot pounds. So you'll see the upper spark plug wire goes to the rear cylinder. Lower spark plug wire goes to the front cylinder. All right, the next step is to put the air box back in. So you'll see I have a 10 millimeter bolt that hooks up there. Breather, breather line that's gonna hook into the air box. Another 10 millimeter bolt that goes in there. Um, your fresh air intake, and it has a hose clamp that's gonna tighten up there. 10 millimeter bolt here. And then on your exhaust um, heat shield, um, there's also a bolt that'll go in there. And then this is for the air sensor right here. I'll plug into the air box as well. So 
If you plugged up your intake like I did, just make sure you take that out before hooking it up. All right, to get the air box free and done back up, there will be uh, four push rivets in this piece. I didn't take them all off because you can get into it. So there's your intake. Keep in mind, you can't get into water deeper than this. And then this is where it hooks into your air box. So you'll have to loosen it up and tighten it up right here to get the air box in and out from the bottom side on the passenger side of your talon. All right, so we have both air intakes uh, tightened down in the right position. You'll see there is a little groove there, so you make sure you get it in the, in the right position on both of them. So that'll line up there. And then uh, the vent hose um, hooks in right there. So this is uh, the driver's side of the engine, how to get everything loosened up and tightened up. All right, <clears throat> I have everything put back together. Um, I did take out the air filter seal there cleaned it up, cleaned out the air box. And uh, here's the air filter, looks pretty dirty. Um, I have exactly 49 miles on this air filter since I swapped it out. Um, I have not been able to get 600 miles out of one air filter in dusty conditions yet. Like I said, this is 50, less than 50 miles on one air filter here. All right, have everything back together. Like I said, we have the air sensor wire plug, the breather hose over there, um, the vent hose, the two air intakes, and then the three bolts over there. And I almost forgot this little push rivet that goes right in there. And then the final cover. So here's the bottom of the air box, that bracket right there, hooks into the exhaust pipe um, heat shield uh, deflector. Um, so we have that back in and tightened up. Um, the last thing is going to be the shock, which you know, only takes two or three minutes to take in and out. And, and then the next step will be the back half of the skid plate. Once you have that rear skid plate back in, um, that's going to complete your valve adjustment process. Hope this video helps and thanks for watching.